Hello folks and welcome back. This is day five of the Mixotech website build and today we will be looking at the products and services section and perhaps even a little bit more here about the history and mission. But before we do, I would like to get back to this sloped background here. This We used a gradient for that to build that a couple videos ago and I mentioned that I was going to look into how to do this a better way or at least an alternate way because if you open this in Firefox the blur that I'm using in this in this gradient is kind of it's it's becoming a thing here like you can see that there's a very slight blur it doesn't look hang on that's actually the wrong one it's here you can see it much better yeah it doesn't look so nice it does look a little blurry I mean this is clearly absolutely nitpicking but I want to have some clean, nice anti-aliasing effect if I can have it. And somebody in the Bricks community actually gave me that solution. And it's something that I remembered that, you know, it was possible, but I, it somehow slipped my mind. We can use a CSS declaration, a property called clip path to achieve this effect. And even there's a really nice clip, clip path maker by Bennett Feely. It's called Clippy. You should remember that because you can make all kinds of, well, you can make all kinds of shapes really out of a general normal div just by using this clip path, right? You can make a star, you can make hexagons, bezels, and stuff like that, right? It's pretty nice what you can do with the clip path generator. So what we want is a trapezoid and we're going to look in a moment at how this is done. So first of all, here we have our hero section we have the section split class and we want to get rid of this overlay that we were originally using where we just set the color stop at 62 and another at 62.1 percent or 60 something and we get rid of that and instead we create a before pseudo element and we put no content in it and make its background the dark blue color that we want and we set the whole thing to position absolute and then just zero 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 and because i already did beforehand hang on, remove this because before this video i actually set the hero itself the section to position relative did i well obviously i must have because it's working yeah, okay, now um, this this before now extends to the edges of the whole section. So now you're going to say, Matt, but now the whole background is blue. That's not what we want. We want to have this, this divider, this diagonal divider. And this is where clip path comes in. So since clip path is not something that's available. Wait, where is my before? There, right. I can use AT to go to the before as well, uh, but for some reason it should be highlighted in yellow now, so I don't know why, but yeah, it's there. So we've put all this in, and now I'm going to get back out of the before, so now I'm on the section split class, and here I'm going to put a bunch of CSS, and that's just this CSS, and here we go, right? Now we can already see that here our clip path has worked and we have this shape here. I took this right from here, right? Now what we want to do is just, we want to give this before element a max width of 65 or so percent. And then we're good. So we go back to before and we go to layout, max width 65% and there's our effect. And now this is what I accidentally show you, showed you at the beginning this line here is much nicer in Firefox than this one. Like we can see it here. If we, if we peek at this closely, we can see that there's a, there's a blur and it looks, it looks not very sharp. And this here looks sharp without being pixelated. Right. And that's what we want. So with that out of the way, <laughs> need to get this out of the way. We can jump right into building the next section. And for that, I'm going to start my stopwatch and we're going to go down here. You remember that I already prepared this, this section. So all we need to do now is style and put in the cards. 
So in the card here, or in this block here, there's a card already. So I'm going to call this service cards. And this is our mm, default card because we're going to use this card later again, but it's just going to have a little bit different contents, but it's still the same kind of card. So it's going to be reused. We have the services section. We have a wrapper for it. We have an icon here that can be called icon. Let's call it a company logo. Let's call it logo. Let's call this heading. Basic text is blurb. And there we go. So why don't we start by styling the wrapper? It's going to be display flex and it's going to be vertical. That's already the case. We're going to vertically, uh, horizontally center stuff. We're going to have a row gap of space M, just our, no, space content, right? We have our regular content gap and we will, in this heading, we're going to take the text that we wrote here, products and services. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. We're going to wrap this in a span wrap and we're going to put the class accent on it there we go very nice and now we get the text here makes a novel pool of small molecule chemistry and so on goes in here and this is gonna be horizontally centered this too as well we're gonna do text align center because it looks centered now but as if you were ever to, well, if I just add a bunch of stuff, right? Now it's centered. But, you know, if the text align isn't centered, then eventually if this ever becomes more, if this becomes wider than the, than the viewport, because there's, we're watching it on a small device, then we see that the text itself is actually not centered. So that's why, that's why we want to have the text align center and also the, on the on the wrapper as in on the parent we want to have use the flex centering now between you you've seen this in kevin's pb 101 between 50 and 70 i believe characters wide is a good width for people to read text so let's go there so we have here and layout max width Let's make it 65 characters and see what happens. Now, I want to have it on two lines. So let's see, 70, 75. That looks nice. I think that's good. Let's see here. Yeah, good enough. Now, we want to have our logo, which is going to be the company logo. What do you mean icon? Oh, that is an icon. Uh, it should be an SVG, not an icon. No, that's wrong. Can I add an SVG here? No, 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 no. Double click, call it logo, no file selected. We're going to do something about that right now. Company assets, going to take the white one and uh, width is going to be 100 and 50 RAM, no, 25 RAM, too much, 20 RAM. Now, I'm going to need to remind myself if there was anything about, and I think that was fine, right? We had this thing with the images that gets squished on Safari when you go to smaller viewports, but I don't think that's a problem with SVGs as far as I remember when we made this header. So we should be good here. And we want a default card. I'm going to put the service cards, the container on grid. It's going to be a grid three. That way we already have our card here. So the card itself is going to have style, layout, padding, going to be space XM, I think is a good one. 30 pixels on desktops. And we're going to put what in? An icon this time really an icon no wait this is actually an svg as well so we're going to get this svg out of figma <laughs> there 
I think I can right click and say, I'm going to pause for a moment and figure that out. Yeah, so it's uh, it's export down here, right? So I can go here to elucidation. This is the icon. I can add an export here and just say I want to export it as an SVG. Export icon, there we go. And then this one as well. Although now that I think about it, perhaps I actually already did that. This icon here, export as SVG, export icon. Let me just see if I already have this in my media library. Design assets. No, it would belong here, I think. Add new media file. Select. Oh, yeah, perhaps I'll also give them the right names. So elucidation and optimization. Elucy. optimization bada bing bada boom we are going to put in an icon for real this time no <laughs> oh wait actually yeah if it's an icon i can use here i can use an svg right so that's good I'm going to put in a, what was the next thing, an H3, H3 and a bunch of text, H and A. So the default card is going to get our content gap, space content, and the icon is going to be this one for the library. The stroke color is going to be white. There we go. Very nice. Height is going to be 2, 3 rem. Width is going to be 3 rem. Seven's about right, I think. Can't go wrong with that. So these ones are going to be text align center before I forget. No, wait, they're not. Are they? Yes, they are. Center. And we're going to go to back to the default card. Going to align cross axis center. And the default card is starting to shake, take shape. So now what we want to do is we want to give it a yellow background. Why did I make this white? There was no reason for that. I'm going to give it a gradient overlay. The overlay is going to be an overlay and we're going to use add color. This, but with a little bit of transparency. Yeah, I'm just going to eyeball it. In fact, if I just for now put in a background image just to see. It's barely visible. So first of all, can we get, put an effect on the image? How do I make the background image? Monochrome. Okay, I'm pausing it. All right, so we do this with the backdrop filter. CSS rule. So we have here the overlay, which, which has a color. I, I just dialed the color down a little so we can really see the, the image behind here. And what we want to do is we're, we want to turn this image black and white for later. Actually, we don't need this now on these cards, but on these cards down here, we're going to need that, right? You can see here the image is coming through and we want them to be black and white. So in order to do that, I need to go here to CSS and I just need to put this CSS in. So root before. Because we're already using the before pseudo element for this overlay, Brix is doing that for us, right? So this overlay, if we put in a gradient like we did above, all that is a before pseudo element. And the backdrop filter works on everything that's behind the element that you put the filter on. So since this before is above this image, so everything under here is going to be turned grayscale 100%. So you know, that's how we turn this 
yeah, that's how we that's how we turn this to grayscale. Although I'm wondering um, if I now remove the image, then I, the yellow background is going to be grayscaled as well, which is not what I want. <laughs> okay, let's find out. I mean, I would expect it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, oops. I go to the overlay and I put this up to whatever, 85 or something. It's going to be not the exact proper color. Yeah, this would be the proper color. And this is the color that we get if we put this grayscale filter on. So if I only want the image to be filtered, I'm going to have to use a, a class a modifier, I guess. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's going to have to be BIM and I'm going to have to use a modifier class on this for cases where there is an image. So we'll, we'll do that in a moment. So for now, we'll leave it like this. Okay, somebody's calling. All right, so I'm back. Uh, I had a call. Now I'm completely lost. <laughs> I have no idea where I was at. But th this is life, guys. This is what you pay for. So um, we want to we wanna have a, a, a modifier class. This is, nice, I, this is a nice opportunity to talk about BEM and, you know, what a modifier class, that block element modifier. That's what BEM is about, right? And there's, there's vi countless videos out there. Obviously, you've heard about it if you've listened or seen Kevin's PB101, but I can go into some detail now about how this, you know, actually shakes down in practice because we are going to need a modifier class, which is not the most common thing to need. But now we do. So we have default card icon heading basic text. I'm gonna just bring over the text. I still have this in my yeah, I do. I still have this in my clipboard. So in case anybody's wondering, uh, how do I how do I see how do I you know store what's in my clipboard? Um, this stuff is called copy Q. I'm using this on Linux Mint. So it's just copy and then the letter Q. I very highly recommend this. I have it on my Windows partition as well. It just stores all your your clipboard contents and you can bring them back. You can edit them. You can, you know, paste them anywhere. And that's really nice. Anyhow, let's bring over the actual content from Bricks. Access to a library of unprecedented chemistry. So for this three, I'm not going to use a CPT right but for this stuff here later with the team members i will use a cpt this is just three cards with you know static content that i don't expect to change or if anything i mean it's i'm just going to do it by hand right i know there are some cpt people or <laughs> some people who really love cpts and want to have them everywhere but i don't think it's necessary here so let's uh, let's go put this stuff in access to our library and do i have why does this feel darker i don't get it i mean it shouldn't at this point it shouldn't feel like the the yellow tone shouldn't feel darker than here but for some reason it does why am i imagining i'm clearly not imagining this so i gotta find out why what if i remove this overlay it gets it does get brighter um so the they add up or what do, what are they doing i'm gonna have to use the modifier class not just for the background image but also for the overlay it seems let's try again let's okay i'm gonna go overlay perhaps i was using the darker shade just there i'm gonna have a color i'm gonna just add this accent color now it's working but if I give it some transparency, is that what messes it up? No. Okay, I was probably using the darker one without without really seeing that. Oops. So we go to 0 0.85 or something like that. Yeah, good enough. And then we can dial it in later. So this is good, but we don't want stuff to be in white. We don't want this to be in white. So I'm going to undo my beautiful work here. Just with a deep sigh, say goodbye to the work that I've done here. 
And I'm going to go back to the card and uh, typography. I don't even know why this is. Oh, it's white because the section tells it to be white. So typography, we're going to give it the base color. Bingo. This is based, guys, isn't it? You're not paying me for puns, okay? You're not paying me at all. So another card, another card, and I'm just going to put in the content. I'm not going to, yeah, actually, I'm going to pause it. And I'm going to put in the content. There we go. And now we're going to go to theme styles. We're going to go to typography. Heading three. And we are going to set this to all caps. Oh, it's a heading two. <laughs> These should all be H3s. Yes, wonderful. So how do I make... How do I decide which size the headings are going to be? Again, I kind of stole some knowledge here from Kevin or adopted some stuff that he was doing. Or I think I, I'm not sure if he's doing exactly that, but I felt inspired by what he said in one of his videos. And I'd need to look into deeper into ACSS to see how actually they're calculating this. But basically what you're doing is you just take one heading size you know which is here i'm giving 36 to typo h1 and then 32 on smaller devices and then the other ones are just calcs so this is three quarters of h1 this is 0.6 of h1 this is 0.4 of it and so on right and then the body is gets 14 and 16 pixels which then advanced thema calculates into rem so it's actually computed in the front end as 3.6 rem and here 1.6 rem and this you know I'm just, it's easy to just use a scale that way you don't have it takes a lot of decision making out of your hands like do we do 24 25 pixels or whatnot but it, this looks nice and it has a nice rhythm everything works together and you know I'm happy that way and me being happy is very important very important section dark sec bottom zero is it There we go. Now, I'm just going to put another section after this. Escape, escape. Section. The next section is going to be what are about us. And now we're going to see, press control P. We have the web. Oh, by the way. This is something that I'm not sure why this is happening, but there's like this one pixel difference here. And I'm going to I'm going to look into that in a moment. But I mean, you can sort of do a workaround if you just this is an absolute. Remember, this is an absolutely position before pseudo element. Right. And it's got top, bottom, left, right, zero as it's positioning values right and then I just can do bottom minus one and then this little gap here this is closed right uh, but I don't know why it's there in the first place so I kind of want to want to inspect this and figure out why this gap is there to begin with oops back to where we were so what are we missing guys what are we missing we're missing this effect here where this section below this actually seems to extend and these guys overlap that section. There's a video by Kevin Geary that tells you, I think he introduces seven methods of creating an overlap effect. And fuck me if I remember all of them, but uh, one that I think is really the best one for this situation is to just use a gradient here on the background. So we have a section dark and you know, the background is redefined in the section dark and I'm going to lock this so I don't accidentally mess with the with the class now I'm going to put an overlay on this and say I want the overlay to be linear angle is 180 is it it's not 180 it's 135 I'm probably <laughs> this is probably way wrong but I didn't study math and I sucked at it in school. So color one is this color. And then color two is going to be white. And 
we want to have color stop 80 percent i mean 135 is clearly wrong and we want to have a color stop of 80 percent so now we have this effect here and now we just we just need to figure out the angle yeah 180 was right <laughs> okay so do we go a little bit further than 80 let's make it 85 right 85 why don't we use a locally scoped variable for that? So we go overlap inset. That's what we're going to call it. So var dash dash overlap inset. And here as well. And then we go, am I doing this right? Hello? Close the bracket and we go to CSS root dash dash overlap inset 85. What am I doing wrong? Percent? Oh, okay. So let's make it. 80 yeah or let's make it calc 100% minus 5 rem Fifteen. Well, was right. So I'm um, using a calc 100% minus 12 rem for the overlap inset. That way, um, it's not a. It's, it's always going to be this many pixels from the bottom, right? And it gives me. It's not. It's not going to change depending on the height of the section. It's always going to be a fixed value here. So now the effect that we have is this, right? So we're happy. And again, Matt happy, everybody happy. Let's make one last change here. Obviously, we're going to have to BEM this stuff and do a modifier class. What time is it? Uh, we got, okay, I've got another 10 to 15 minutes. Let's get this ball rolling. We are default card, default card, default card. These guys are going to have to be the same height. I'm just gonna for a moment I'm gonna have to I'm gonna add a little bit of nonsense here. So we go to service cards and grid three is fine. We want the stuff to stretch. Yes, we do. Align items. Thank you. Mm. And now we're gonna bam out the card. So right click. All the styling that we want is here and i think it's all looking fine and we, yeah whatever goes whatever needs to happen with the responsive design we can do later so right click class converter default card icon heading text not text basic body why did i <laughs> Oh God, I'm stupid. I did, I, I duplicated it before bimming it. Now I'm going to have to do a bunch of work again. Learn Maddie, learn, learn the hard way. Class converter, default cut icon heading body, copy the ID styles to the classes, yes. Erase the ID styles, yes, create classes. So now we've got our classes. There's no more ID stuff left. We're going to save. I'm going to pause to spare you the agony. All right, so these guys are now all bemmed out. So let's say, you know, I ever want to change anything about the H3 here. Um, font size 1.2M, right? Then it happens for all three of them, right? And here's the nice thing about Advanced Thema. It tells you what other classes or what other elements on this, on this page have the same class, right? Can you see here? If I click here on heading, we see all of these are highlighted. 
and they're highlighted here as well so this is really nice right there it just shows me okay these are the other two that have the same class on them another really awesome benefit of advanced thema so we do want to have it like this and we are good now we're going to do a modifier class so the modifier class is going to work as follows so we've got blocks and elements right bem stands for blocks elements and modifiers so your block is the card right this this is the parent and the elements are everything that's inside this card so if if inside like if i put a wrapper in here and then i put more stuff inside that wrapper like let's say i put an image wrapper which is a div then i put an image in that image wrapper then the image is still it's not going to be it, the, the class is not going to be default card underscore underscore wrapper underscore underscore image it's just going to be this default card underscore underscore image because bem means block and then element there's no block element and element that doesn't exist right it's just for having everything neat and tidy and organized this is how bem is supposed to work and in this case we want a modifier so if we add another class here and we call it default card double dash not double underscore uh bgimg right which is, is short for default card double dash, double dash background image now we're going to give this class the we don't need the overlay because that's already on the bim on the on the actual default card but and we do we, we're not going to put a background image on the class because the background image is going to be different right like these are different background images right so that's going to happen at the id level and we're going to do that later when we get to the to build, actually building that section i'm going to show you how we're going to solve this but what we do want uh what do we <laughs> what was it that we were missing Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the filter. So just a bunch of CSS here. I'm gonna bring up my CSS. I'm gonna find it root, bef not before, no, that wasn't the one. Backdrop filter, right? So root before background fil filter grayscale 100%. That's all we really need on this class. So now I take off the class. I'm actually gonna lock these classes so I don't mess with them by accident. So now on the ID level, I'm going to style and put a background image in. And while I have select image, this image in there, we're going to see that it's black and that it's going to be black and white grayscale. Let's do something with a real nice color tint insert. You see that it's grayscale, right? Um, it is grayscale because I have that class on here. If I remove that class, the color comes back, right? So that's what we want. BGIMG, bingo. I think um, if I go back to the card <clears throat> and I undock it again, I go to style, gradient overlay. What do we have here? Color, it's at 0 0.8. Let's just see. So obviously this. 0 0.85. That's clearly not, that's too much Opac uh, too much transparency, 75. I think eight is actually fine. 0.85 is already, then we're losing too much of the detail on the image, but this is, I think this is good. I think we can keep it like that. If we go 85, yeah, let's stay at 0 0.8. Then obviously we can always change it later. So we remove this. We lock this class, we remove the background image class. We go to style at the ID level, we remove the background. Also another advanced theme thing. We can see here with the blue dots that stuff is styled on the class level. We can see here that it's styled on the ID level because it's a yellow dot. And then if I activate the class, then it shows me that, you know, something is styled on the ID level again with different uh, colored dots. So this is really nice, right? Here it shows me that, you know, this is actually it doesn't show me again what's on the ID level and what isn't. Oh, yeah, because there's a background color here. OK, so if I remove that, then it would turn red because now it's it tells me that this is styled actually on the ID level. So another really nice way to, you know, optimize the way you work in bricks. 
Why do I still have this background image there? Okay, because I didn't delete it. I think that's all we need to do for today. We've got this section ready. Let's just take a look at it in the front end. Oh yeah, I wanted to I wanted to figure that out. I might as well do that now. I'm going to pause. I'm going to do some thinking and tinkering and see what I come up with. And I'll talk to you in a moment. While I was here, I actually found that I was setting the icons here on the class. The icons need to be set on the ID level. Just to let you guys know that there was a mistake that I made that I'm currently in the process of correcting. Okay, so I'm not finding a quick solution to this, to this uh, this little pixel here that, that shines through. And so I'm going to post in a community and figure out what's going on there. And I will fix this here because I don't know why this became... Is this my accent class? Does the accent class have the typography thing on it? Yeah, that shouldn't happen. So get rid of the accent class, style at ID level, and then, yeah, this is fine. But then we need this accent here. Remove the class, or not remove it, but disable it, and then style at the ID level. Oops, there. Now this text is centered. This is fine, and we had another class here, the brand class. This doesn't have a typography rule on it, so it's all good. Let's lock these classes. Yeah, they're classed. They're, they're classed. They're locked. Guys, we're good for today. Thank you very much for watching. We have a full products and services section. We learned how to build that class. We learned how to BEM it. We learned how to prepare it for later when we need it again, not class the card. And we learned how to make this effect here where the section below seems to extend up here and these guys seem to overlap it. So I will talk to you soon. Bye.